Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of the Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox areas. I ask that you come to this time with an open heart and an open mind. Ready yourself that we may truly come into the presence of God and leave transformed as people living in abundant life. Hear the affirmation. All of us are looking with unveiled faces at the glory of the Lord, as if we were looking in a mirror. We are being transformed into that same image from the one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. This comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3.18 Our psalm this week is Psalm 30, today from the King James Version. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up, and hast not made my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment, his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And my prosperity, I said, shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide my face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned me for my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God. I will give thanks unto ever for thee. Let us pray. Gracious God, ever-present helper, we thank you that in the night of desperation and sadness over our separation from you, your steady hand is not far from us. As you lead us towards the dawn of new beginnings, May we join you and gather others in the bright dance that celebrates your desire to renew the face of the earth. Amen. Friends, this first week of Lent, our theme is We Shall All Be Changed. And I pray throughout these 40 days, throughout this Lenten season, we will experience or be open to the transformation that comes that we celebrate in the resurrection and Easter tide. Our first reading today comes from Reuben Job and Marjorie Thompson, Companions in Christ. Christians see grace most clearly in God's act of self-giving through the person of Jesus Christ. In the suffering love and forgiveness of the cross, we perceive grace in all its fullness. Faith in Christ becomes the way we discover and apprehend this incredible gift. From the beginning of creation, we were meant to know ourselves as God's children, enjoying all of the benefits of our full inheritance. Having lost our native inheritance through sin, we now receive these benefits through Jesus Christ, God's love and favor in Christ bestow them upon us. God bless our reading today. Uh, Bishop Job and uh, Marjorie Thompson are are trying to offer this, this hope that the intended uh, inheritance was all of creation, 
was all of God's supremely good gift. Uh, and we chose not to participate in that. Uh, it's not hard to think about when you uh, spend time with people, <laughs> uh, young, old, otherwise. You can see how often we turn away from good things. How often we want to do it ourselves instead of rely on others. How often we seek affirmation, control, feed our appetites in so many other ways instead of the ways that we know fulfill us, that we know affirm us, that we know give us true power. And so we pray and we are so grateful in Christ were bestowed upon these gifts, despite our failings, despite our flaws, despite our imperfections. And we're able to be transformed into Christ's very image, into what God intended for us, to the best version of ourself, growing, changing, perhaps not truly ever reached perfection on this earth, but maybe in moments, and perhaps, if God wills, for long periods of time. We're all in a different journey, but we're on this journey together. And we're on this journey with God who is with us. Our scripture reading today comes from Genesis chapter 32, starting in verse 22. Jacob got up during the night took his two wives, his two woman servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the Jebak River, shallow water. He took them and everything that belonged to him, and he helped them cross the river. But Jacob stayed apart by himself, and a man wrestled with him until dawn broke. When the man saw that he couldn't defeat Jacob, he grabbed Jacob's thigh and tore a muscle in Jacob's thigh as he wrestled with him. The man said, let me go because the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. He said to Jacob, what's your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name won't be Jacob any longer, but Israel, because you struggled with God and with men and won. Jacob also asked, tell me your name. But he said, why do you ask for my name? And he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, because I've seen God face to face, and my life has been saved. The sun rose of Jacob passed, limping because of his thigh. Therefore Israelites don't eat the tendon attached to the thigh muscle to this day, because he grabbed Jacob's thigh muscle at the tendon. God bless the reading uh, of the passage. You, You may be familiar with this passage. God wrestling with Jacob, Jacob wrestling with God. And, and, uh, you know, for most of us, we probably won't have these uh, physical encounters where we have to wrestle with God. Uh, And perhaps even for Jacob, this was really uh, more uh, metaphorical or or spiritual than than physical. We don't know. I wasn't there. Uh, I tend to take things at face value, but I don't think you have to. But we all, I think, wrestled with God. We've all doubted, we've all asked questions, and, and we should if, if we haven't, or at least in my experience. There are a few, let me say this. I know some people, I know some people who have the kind of faith that hasn't faltered, and I don't think ever will. Uh, and they're not boisterous people, they're not preachers, they're not... Uh, I don't know one preacher like that. Uh, they're they're not teachers. Uh, you know, they're not they're not great leaders, writers. They're 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 saints, uh, and they walk around among us, blessing others, sharing God's love. And so I know a few of those people, but I think most of us, and I think it's healthy to doubt. I think it's even healthy to deconstruct. If we grew up in a tradition where we were told you cannot uh, believe this, that, or the other thing, or you have to believe this very narrow view of things, this is the way. (laughs) 
This is the truth. This is the life. As if that wasn't Jesus and that was what Mark believes or whatever person believes. Then sometimes it's good to have a deconstruction. Even if you grow up in a, in a healthy tradition that allows you to uh, challenge uh, what you believe or to ask questions of God, to be angry with God occasionally, uh, I think it's still good to have that kind of deconstruction to kind of say, okay, I've learned from so many other people, what do I believe? I've been taught, because you can't, you can't come to the understanding of Christ. Uh, perhaps you can come to the understanding of divinity in some uh, 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 non-biblical way, but when it comes to being a Christian, when it comes to following Christ, the only way you can do that is to be told about it. <laughs> the, the story's not intuitive, and it's not supposed to be. It's dependent on each other. It's dependent on us. That's part of the power of the story. And so I, I encourage you, these 40 days, it's okay to wrestle with God. It's okay to wrestle with your faith. It's okay if you're going through deconstruction. It's okay if you have doubts and questions. Because like Jacob, those things lead to transformation. Jacob was transformed into Israel. And I think we can all be transformed into the image of God, the image of Christ, into love. It is the beginning of our week, and so we give thanks to God and praise God's name. Spend a minute thanking God for everything good in your life and praising God for the blessings you have received. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul, but your pure love alone till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.